What could be even more meaningful is what's happening with the yen. So the yen has been the whipping boy in the financial market, certainly among major currencies for the last what, two years. And then if you don't know this, it has, if Grant certainly is aware that the yen has had a very powerful rally here recently. And my question is whether that could have, and this is just showing how bearish the investment community was on the yen prior to this. And if you went back and looked at when they were really bullish, which was the kind of that mountain line, mountain chart there uh, around 2020, during the, the, uh, the worst of COVID. So the yen was viewed as a safe haven. People plowed into that and then it just got absolutely crushed. And then when it was down to what, 163 to the dollar, uh, this, the negative sentiment was overwhelming. And since then it's had a very powerful rally back up to, I think it's actually below 150 to the dollar as of this mm -hmm. morning, but somewhere around there. So what do you think that could mean to asset prices globally? I think it's a really important um a massively misunderstood dynamic here, Dave. Yeah, you know, the yen has been the carry trade choice for such a long time because of the absolute certainty that rates were going to remain negative, and the the Bank of Japan was going to pursue the policy they pursued. Um, you know, Kuroda San left his post as governor of the Bank of Japan last April, and we had uh, Wade San come in the new the new head of the Bank of Japan, and it was a perfect opportunity for them to to change their path and. It, the way the Japanese culture and the Japanese society is, it's very difficult. You know, face is a very important part of that culture. And so, you know, about turns and, you know, you'll see companies that don't meet their quarterly, um, you know, numbers, the chairman will, you know, apologize and bow before the, the press, you know, taking the taking the blame for this terrible performance. Um, and so when Ueda Sen came out and, and talked about, um, you know, the normalization of monetary policy, um, it was ignored by an awful lot of people, but it was a massive, massive change. And for them to get the the rate from minus ten basis points to you know zero to ten basis points was a big move. Although it was a tiny move, you know, the, the, having a ten basis point um, essentially Fed funds rate in Japan is meaningless, right? Especially when it's gone from negative ten basis points to positive ten basis points. Does that really move the needle? And it doesn't. But as a sign of intent, as a sign of what the Bank of Japan were trying to do and what they thereafter promised to do, which is you know, normalize rates, and we saw this week they've raised it now to 25 basis points. And again, 25 basis points in and of itself is not a massive sea change, but they've been low for so long, the fact that they're trying to move higher and the fact that what the Japanese have been paid on their um, deposits has been so paltry for so long, it doesn't take much given the yields on Japanese government bonds to see an awful lot of money coming home to Japan. And Japan is the biggest creditor nation in the world. So everybody's short the yen because it's the perfect carry trade. The Japanese Central Bank have telegraphed for a long, long time now, we are on a path to normalization. And you know the weakness in the yen um, it went a bit further than I thought it would. You know, I, I, I've written about this a few times. I said, you know, it could get to the high 50s. I didn't think it would go through uh, 160, but it did briefly. Um, but, you know, to see it at 130 would be far less surprising to me than seeing it through that 160 level. We had the spike to 160. It started to come back now. But the Bank of Japan has changed, and they've changed – their policy. They've seen the Federal Reserve get interest rates up to five and a quarter percent without breaking anything. Now, Japan is a very different kettle of fish. We haven't got time to go into it all. But in terms of a signal that, hey, perhaps markets are more resilient than we think in terms of higher cost of capital, Japan's got an awful long way to go. 